Today I'd like to walk you through the steps um, of what I do to create a circuit board. Basically, uh, this circuit that I'm going to make is just going to be a bridge rectifier that uh, hooks up to a LM317 voltage regulator. And this is going to be used for a dynamo on a bicycle. I need it to charge uh, a 6 volt lead acid battery. Uh, what I'm using here is PCB Wizard Professional Edition. There's a lot of software out there that you can buy that'll do this. Uh, I prefer this one because it takes a lot of the work out of uh, creating the circuit board. Uh, basically, how I'm going to start here is uh, click on View, Gallery, um, Circuit Symbols. Yes, that's correct. I'm going to go ahead and drag in the AC voltage source. From here, under discrete semiconductors, I'll select the diode. And basically, all I'm going to do is click it, Control R to rotate it, Control C copies it, Control V pastes it, and I'm going to make another one, rotate that, copy that, paste that. You can just basically click and drag these around any way you want them. The general consensus is if it looks neat on uh, on a schematic, it's also going to look neat on the circuit board. Um, now, uh, by clicking the, these, this arrow tool here, you can click and drag these oh, to connect them. And those are not the two that I want. I'm going to connect these. Oh, no, that's incorrect. And then I'll connect these. Like so. This will be my positive out. This will be my negative out. If you could help it at all, you try not to cross these lines. Because if they cross here, there chances are there's a good chance that they're going to cross on the circuit board. But um, once I get out of there, uh, here's my positive, my negative. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple capacitors. One before the LM317, one after. Uh, back in, oh, let's see here. I need, uh, I need a couple resistors as well. Two of them for the 317. They're going to be configured like so. Back to discrete semiconductors. Uh, I forgot I want to add one more diode <coughs> on the output leg of the 317. Okay, now I need to add um, some pins for the LM317. That's a it's a three pin uh voltage regulator. It's going to look something like that. Basically what I'm going to do here is, um, well, yeah, we can mess with the spacing later. Let's just hook it up. I know that if the back were facing towards the back, which I want it to be, this is our input, this is our output, and this is our adjust pin. Our input's going to come I'm going to go ahead and go around this like so. This is a little funky sometimes, you got to play with it. A lot of times if you just move the mouse it does that, if you click it'll move with you. Alright, that's going to go to the capacitor. 
which is going to connect to the positive from our uh, bridge rectifier. I'm not really focusing on neatness at the moment, even though I probably should. I know our output is going to connect through one resistor to the adjust pin and that pin is also going to connect to another resistor which connects to ground. The other capacitor connects to ground and our output also connects to the other side of this capacitor. <coughs> this is the way I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is going to be our output. I think I'd also like to replace this with two pins as well. I don't know exactly what it's going to do when it makes the board, so um, this way I can control exactly what it looks like. That'll be our input then. Just a quick uh, check to see if everything's okay. Alright, everything looks alright. I'm not going to fill in any of these values. We're going to go ahead and uh, make them up on the fly. I'm just interested in making the board at the moment. So once you have your schematic laid out, this is my N. It's going to be AC, uh, rectified to DC, smoothed out with a capacitor through the voltage regulator, um, which is going to be the LM317. Um, these, two is, these two resistors are going to make a divider for the adjust pin and our output is going to ha be on a capacitor through a diode because I'm going to be charging a battery. Capacitor is probably not necessary but I'm going to put it in anyway and to the output. These are the boards I'm going to use. I'm going to fit uh, multiple circuits on one board. It's basically just a single-sided copper PCB laminate. Um, about five and seven eighths, five and fifteen sixteenths by four inches exactly. So almost four by six. Okay, since my copper boards are um, four by six, I've decided I want three rows of three columns of circuits of this circuit here on that board. So I'm going to make nine of them. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click on Tools, Convert, Design to Printed Circuit Board. Yes. Next. Uh, I'll specify the size. My width is going to be 2 inches by 1.33 because 2 times 3 is 6. 1.33 times 3 is approximately 4. And those are the size of my board. Hit Next. I'm not going to change any of this. Next. Next, uh, I'm going to deselect automatically placed components on the board. I'm going to do it myself. Next, and convert. Uh, selecting the magnifying glass up here, I can select and drag to zoom in. Close this, I don't need it. Back to the arrow tool. I'm going to find my input. I don't uh, see in 2, see in 3. I didn't label the input. I only labeled the output, so I can com come back here. 4 and 5 appears to be my input. <coughs> so back to here. I'm going to find 4 and 5. Input I'm going to put on the left side of the board. Oop, that's a problem. you got to make sure you select the symbol, not the... Oh, that was apparently the out. You gotta make sure you select the symbol and not the text, otherwise it's just gonna move the text. I'm gonna try and make this as symmetrical and nice as I possibly can. 
uh, same thing applies with these. Control R rotates them. All right, that's starting to look pretty good. Maybe what I'll do is move these up to here. And basically, when it comes to this now, the less lines that you have, the better. Crossing, I'm sorry, the less lines you have crossing. This is going to be my negative out. I usually try to keep all the positive stuff towards the top just to just to prevent confusion and all the negative stuff towards the bottom. Uh, one thing here now with the spacing of this LM317, that's this these pins 1, 2, and 3 right here. Let's just look up the data sheet and find out the distance between the pins. I'm assuming this is in inches, a .09 to a .110 and this would probably be millimeters, a 2.29 to a 2.79 uh, spacing. Let's back to PCB Wizard. Um, on the grid, uh, 0.1 inches looks pretty good for this. So you just got to make sure that these pins, I'm right clicking on these by the way, pads round oh. okay there's my 317 all right I like that <coughs> now I'm gonna click on tools auto route route all nets and okay and there it is everything appears to be nice and tidy 1k to ground just kinda double check everything here <coughs> if you click this red this is the copper area you can go ahead and drag it and it'll create a little spot Oh, you know what? Before I do that, let's do this. Um, let's left-click, drag, Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. We're going to go ahead and make six inches. By about four inches. These are overlapping a little, but uh, none of the components are smashed into each other, so that's okay. Now this copper area, I can just drag that the whole length. Be something like that, then. It's out of sight artwork. Something that you may want to do that I haven't done, that I probably should have done, you can click on this little text tool and place text in here. Sometimes it's a good idea to stick a just a little positive symbol near your positive on the output so nobody gets confused. And had I thought of this earlier I could have done it. Alright, save that. Alright, next step. Print. This is to check size, basically, and and to see if it comes out right on the paper. Uh, personally, my toner is uh, a little weak at the moment, so I might have to actually print it on the transfer transfer paper twice, which is what I'm going to be using. Also, I hear the brother toner is is hard to get to transfer. I haven't had too many problems. I had problems the first time around, but it was a lot easier the second time. Always, I think I rushed it the first time. So basically, we'll check our width. It looks uh, fantastic. Check our height. 
we knew it was going to end up a little short, no big deal. So basically all we have to do now is print this onto some transfer. Just a quick aside, I changed my toner cartridge. Uh, you can definitely see the difference there. This makes a huge difference too when, when you're doing your circuits. Um, if you can take a look, see all the grain inside of that black? That's going to end up being uh, copper that's actually worn away. And that grain is actually inside of your, uh, all your little terminal, all your leads there that connect each terminal. So, um, yeah, this is going to end up being much better for me. Alright, and there it is.